Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is creating a jump scare inside of Unreal Engine 5. Now this is very similar to one I did a while ago for Unreal Engine 4, and by while I mean like a year or two ago. But pretty much recreating that, but making it a little bit more efficient, and obviously in Unreal Engine 5 now. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if we to get into the game, you can see we can walk around like so. I've got it in first person, and if I to walk forwards, we're going to have a jump scare sound effect, and a ghost or a character run from one side of the hallway to the other and obviously if we go and check where they went they're not going to be here anymore. So this is a pretty typical jump scare you get in games. Now obviously my corridor is pretty wide, you can obviously change this completely how you want so you can make this narrower, you can make the player be closer before it happens, you can make them run faster, you can make them look different, have a different sound, all that great stuff, you can do that, it's very very easy to customise and change for what you want. But this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our AI which we're going to use. So again, this might be a ghost, it might be a zombie, whatever it is for you that you want your player to be jump scared by, we're going to set that up. So I've already got my mesh and animations for this. So I've just got something off of mixmode.com, great free website for you to get free characters and animations. And I'll leave a link in the description down below and on screen now to my video on how to use Mixmo with Unreal Engine 5. So once we've got our character all imported, we want to actually create the blueprint for it. Now you might already have this, if you do, perfect, use that, if you don't, I'm going to create one now. So we're going to right click, create a blueprint class, creating a character blueprint, and I'm going to name this one Zombie BP. Name this whatever you like, but that's what I'm going with. In here, I'm not going to do a lot at all. I'm going to select my mesh and give it the correct skeletal mesh which I want, move it down into the correct place. And then for me, I'm also going to rotate it 90 degrees to the right like that, just because the animation I'm using, I need it to be facing that direction. And now because this is the only place I'm using this blueprint, this zombie, I'm not going to be using it anywhere else in the level, it's just for this jump scare, I don't need to set up an animation blueprint. Because the only time the player is going to see this is when he's running. So I don't need an idle, I don't need a walk, I don't need to transition between them. The player's only going to see them running. So what we can do is instead of use animation blueprint, we can use animation asset and just give it our run animation here. That just makes it a lot more efficient and a lot easier for us to use as we go, again, we don't need all that extra steps in there. So we're gonna compile and save that. That's now the visuals of my zombie set up. But I obviously also want him to be able to run. So we're gonna go to the event graph, delete these three nodes, Ooh, not like that, sorry. We want to delete these three nodes, right click and add a custom event, naming this one simply run or trigger jump scare or whatever it is that makes the most sense for you. On this, we're gonna add an input node, naming this location or go to or run to, whatever makes sense for you again. And I'm gonna set this to be a vector. Now you can either have this as a vector or an actor reference. The difference being a vector means you're gonna be inputting an actual location value. An actor reference means you're gonna be going to a certain blueprint. Whichever makes the most sense for you, do that. I prefer to do a vector because then even if I want to do a reference to a blueprint, which I am going to do later, I can still just get the location of that and input it in here. So it just gives me a little bit more flexibility. After this, I'm going to get AI move to, like so. We want the block underneath it with the kind of white block icon there. And then the pawn is going to be get a reference to self. The destination is going to be our location from our run custom event there. And that's all we need to do to actually move it. For me as well, I also want this to be destroyed after we've gotten there, so when the player then goes to investigate where they went, the AI isn't there. So on success, what we're going to do is destroy actor like so. And we will compile and save that like this. That is all we need to do inside of our AI blueprint. So let's close this like so, and then I'm going to place it in my level. So again, for me, I want it to be running across the end of the hallway here, so I'm just going to place him in here just outside the player, but close enough so they're going to instantly run out in front of the corridor. Now I've noticed I've actually rotated this the wrong way, so let me just open this up, go to my viewport, and then rotate him so he's facing this way. Again, it's just the animation I've got, I want it to be facing a certain direction, as you can see, like so. Well, actually, no, I think I did have it right, I just had that bit located the wrong way, so very sorry about that. Let me rotate him all the way back around. I just had the actual blueprint rotated wrong, so again, my apologies. There we go, that's a lot better. So as he's going to be running across, you'll notice his animation is facing the player like so. So again, I think maybe there, or just there, is going to be fine, just outside the player. So when they come up, he's then going to run out like so. 
Now this is fine for me because the player isn't going to be able to get into this room or any or anywhere around here to be able to see the AI before this jump scare is triggered. If the player can do that for you, then what you might want to do is spawn in the AI here instead of always having him here. So where so later on when I trigger it and I make him run, you can also do spawn actor and then make him run. So that's another way around doing it. The next step we want to take is we want to find the end location for where the AI is running. So I want that to be, again, just over here. Now what I could do is just get a location of this. So let's say I want this light. I can get the location and just write that in straight away. Or what I'm going to do, just to make it more easy and more efficient for us, is we're going to create another blueprint. So in our content browser, we're going to right click, get a blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this jump scare endpoint. BP like so. Opening it up straight away, and the only thing I'm going to add in here is simply an arrow, and we're going to rotate that so it's facing up like so. Maybe increase the size a little bit to make it two instead of one. We'll compile, save, and close that. Again, we only need this to be a reference to a point in the world. We don't need this to do anything else. So now let's drag and drop this into our level, and you can see we have this here. And also, I should mention arrows don't show in game by default, so the player is not going to know this is here at all. And the reason why I wanted to do an arrow is because you can see we can now just simply and easily move this and this is going to change where the AI is running to. So if we wanted we can move all the way down here so the AI is going to run all the way around this corner if we wanted. I don't want that so I'm just going to leave it here. But again this means we can easily move it like this and that will then update in the code automatically for us. So once we've got that done we're going to save this. The next thing we want to do is we want to add in a nav mesh bounds so the AI can actually run here. So we go to the add up at the top, go to volumes, and then we want to get a nav mesh bounds volume, and just scale this up to the size you need. You can make this cover your whole level if you want, but for me, the AI is only going to be able to go here, so this is the only place I need it to be. If we press P, it should be green where the AI can move, so I can see that this is going to be perfectly fine for me. Everywhere the AI needs to be is covered in green, with a little bit of leeway room as well. We don't need it, but it's there anyway. I'll press P again to toggle that off. Now we want to start working on actually triggering this. So what we're going to do is go back up to the add at the top, go to basic, and we want to get a trigger box like so. And this is how we're actually going to trigger the jump scare. So I'm going to scale this up to be the size we want. I'm just going to cover the entire hallway of the corridor that we have here, like so. So the player has to go through it. So again, this basically means if the player enters this box trigger, we're going to start the jump scare. So there's no way for the player to get around this for me and I'm going to move this back a little bit here. So again, once the player enters this area, the jump scare is going to start. So I think here is going to be fine. It means once they get here, the jump scare will start. And again, obviously we can just move this about and it will change where it starts. So we can then just mess about with it and get the perfect values for us. With this still selected, what we're going to do is go and open the level blueprint up at the top here, right click inside the level blueprint, and we're going to get begin overlap. So we have add on actor begin overlap for a collision box we just created here. Out of other actor, what I'm going to do is cast to our character blueprint, which for me is BP third person character. And now the reason why I'm doing that is just so it's only triggered by the player. If another AI that I have in my level, for example, maybe I have a friendly AI, if they walk into this, it's not going to trigger for them. It will only trigger for the player. Then after this, what I'm going to do is get actor of class, not get all actors of class, just get actor of class, so singular, and we're going to get our zombie BP in here, or the AI, whatever you named it. Now the difference between this and get all actors of class is this will always just get the first actor of this class in the world. Now since I only have one in a level, this is perfectly fine for me. If you have more than one, you will probably want to do get all actors of class and then actually run a search to find the correct one for you but I imagine you'll probably just have this one here. Out of the return value of this, we want to get run, which is the custom event we created earlier. So if you gave it a different name, you want to just call that there like so. And you'll notice we now have this location here. I'm gonna move this out and then before this, so the execution of get actor of class, we're then going to get actor of class once again. This time it is going to be the jump scare endpoint BP. Return value of this will be get actor location and this location is going to go into the location of the run custom event we have here. So it's going to run to the end of our jump scare point that we've already set up. So this is now going to make our AI run. What I'm also going to do is after this is play sound. Now you can do either 2D or at location. 
I'm doing 2D just because I want the sound to be everywhere, but you can do at location as well if you want it to just be in a specific place. Now the sound I'm using is just a quick jump scare sound effect I got off of freesound.org, which I'll leave in the description down below, and you can hear it here. So I'm going to select that, press this arrow on the play sound 2D to use current asset, we'll compile, save, and this should now be the code done and working perfectly for us. So let's hit play and test this out. If we were to walk forwards, you can see once we get to a certain point, we're going to get the sound effect and the AI is going to run across like so. Now that seems a little bit slow for me, so what I'm going to do is speed up the AI. So let's open up our zombie BP once again, select the character movement and search for max walk speed. And I'm going to double this so I've changed the max walk speed from 600 to 1200 and that should now be a little bit better for me, I think. So let's test this out again. We'll see, that's now a lot better for me. It's gonna run across really fast. That was maybe a little bit too fast, so you might wanna slow it down a bit as well if you want. I'm not gonna get too finicky with it because again, I've shown you what it is that you can do. This doesn't need to look perfect for me. Again, you can then really mess about with it to get the perfect values which you want. But I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up this jump scare in which when we walk to the, towards the end of a corridor, an AI is gonna spawn in, run across the end of the hallway, scare the player and play a nice sound effect as well and you can obviously see it gets destroyed at the end so if the player goes to investigate the ai is not here anymore so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one